Here we are at example 1b from our 4.3, 4.47 notes. We're asked to factor the following. And just looking at this, we do notice that we have a trinomial here and that there are some things in common that they both, or I'm sorry, that they all three share that common factor too. So again, that's what we're gonna do first is just factor out that greatest common factor, that GCF. So again, pulling out a two, we then have a set of parentheses. Um, and that's really the only thing that we can pull out right now. Like we can't pull out an extra J because these two have J's, uh, but 60 does not. So it looks like the only thing that we can pull out right away is just a two. Now, if we were to factor out a two from this two J squared, we know that we'd have to have a J squared there because again, you could redistribute it to get the two J squared originally. If we factor this negative 22 J by a factor of two, in other words, kind of like dividing it, uh, we know that we'd end up then with negative 11 J. And if we divided or factored out a two from 60, we'd end up then with 30. Now, again, that first step, finding the GCF, the greatest common factor, is a rock solid go-to because it will make your life easier as you're looking for less factors uh, to kind of break this down even further. Moving on then, we still have our two out in front, that's not changing. Um, breaking down this trinomial into a uh, set of two different binomials, we know that because our coefficient here is just one for the j squared, that we just have a j times another j in our two parentheses. And then when we look at the numbers or the factors of 30, we know that we always have one in that number, so one and 30. We have two and 15. We have three and 10, which also gives us 30. Uh, there, four, it's not evenly divided by. Um, five and six, and now we're pretty much back at our list, okay? So let's go ahead and just try and think what two numbers um, pretty much combine to give us 11. And it looks like five and six do that. So we're gonna go ahead and dump in five and six inside of our parentheses. Now right here, the order really doesn't matter just because um, we don't have a, an extra coefficient and a value to really have to work with. So it really doesn't matter where the five or where the six end up going. Now just looking at the signs, if we were to distribute this, we could get a 6j. And then when we combine these, we get uh, the 5j. Again, we kind of do those a lot just to check out and see the numbers to make sure that they are matching with our middle term, negative 11. And when we combine 6 and 5, we do end up getting 11, or in this case, negative 11 that we're hoping for. So that's how you kind of know, hey, when we combine these two numbers together, we can get that middle one. Now we have to start playing with just the signs. Well, if we know we want negative 11j, we know that both of these have to combine to give us negative 11j. And as a result, they have to end up both being negative because if you have negative 6j and you take away five more j's, then you end up with that grand total of negative 11j's. And as a result of that, both of these then would have to be negative for that to happen. And again, you can always check by distributing. So it looks like j times j gives us our j squared. j times negative 6 gives us negative 6j. Negative 5 times j gives us negative 5j. And then negative 5 times the negative 6 gives us our positive regular 30. And again, just checking to see that these two combine to give us negative 11. So it looks like we have factored this thing completely now. This would be our most factored form. Again, though, that is example 1B from our 4.3, 4.4 set of notes.